to, to introduce to you Dr. Juana Cosa, Professor Dr. Juana Cosa, who is uh, the world pioneer who taught us about biliary pancreatitis. Uh, I had the privilege to train under Professor Acosta in Argentina. Uh, Dr. Carlos Pellegrini, who is well known to the whole world, was also one of his, of his students. And he's going to talk to us about early decompression in acute biliary pancreatitis, an evidence-based review. Professor Acosta, thank you for coming. I am tired, and I suppose that you are more tired than I am. So I will try to be brief, as brief as possible. The, the, I, I would say that beyond any doubt, the, the importance of uh, ERCP, early ERCP, with or without endoscopic sphincterotomy, apply for the short-term management of acute goldstone pancreatitis is one of the questions which is still unresolved, but I think that it is critical to resolve. Uh, as you know, uh, for that, I examine the in-base, the Medline, and the Cochrane Library database, and selected five randomized control trials, including one from our group, to design to study and comparing early ERCP with or without sphincterotomy to conservative management for acute goldstone pancreatitis. Uh, you know that the first one that demonstrate the relationship between ductal obstruction for a gallstone in uh, acute pancreatitis was OPI in 1901. In 1974, Ledesma and I only added simply uh, uh, to a pioneer finding of OPI that a stone impaction is rather a transient phenomenon rather than, than more than, than, than a, a persistent phenomenon. So after that, Kelly in 1976 confirmed our findings. On that basis, we design, conceive, a uh, a mechanism, a pathogenic mechanism for acute pancreatitis. As you see in A, is a fasting cholelithiasic patient. In B, there is the patient eat and the, the, the cholecystal Kinin provokes gallbladder contraction called expulsion of whole stone toward the common bile duct and secreting stimulate the pancreatic secretion. Uh, if one of the expulsed stone impact at the ampulla, produce hypertension both in the Wilson duct and in the common bile duct. You see the arrows. And in most of the cases, the stone passes rapidly and goes toward the duodenum. On the basis of such, uh, this explains several things. For example, 
why acute pancreatitis is frequently developed after a dietary abuse, and also why this disease has been called so properly a self-limiting disease. We, we, uh, on, we, we, we thought, we, we hypothesized that if a strong impaction initiates pancreatitis, the persistence of that impaction could uh, aggravate the disease. And the decompression by, if the stone passes to the duodenum, of you take it out operatively, should alleviate it. But that, if, uh, if that is that way, if that is that way, that, that hypothesis, if there is a close uh, relationship between duration of obstruction and severity of pancreatitis, early decompression would be mandatory. And if there is no, it would be unnecessary and potentially risky. These are the five studies that we selected, and you can see the variables, the characteristic of the study. All are ERC, uh, RCT, or are three are blinding, and the remaining unblinding. Uh, you, you, you can. The, the method for evaluating the severity of pancreatitis varied greatly, and the severity of pancreatitis at admission also is, is different. In, but in our study, it's only 10%, and the mean of the other four studies is 40%. So there is a big difference between one and the others. The following slide is referred to the variables that has to do with the early RCP with or without sphincterotomy. And you see that the incidence was different. You, you may think that the, the incidence should be 100%. The patient has been uh, randomized to that arm. 100% of the patient should be subjected to uh, ERCP with or without the sphincterotomy. But th that is not the case because many of the patients, as you will see uh, following, uh, many of the patients disobstruct spontaneously. And you cannot subject to ERCP a patient who is subtracted spontaneously before the time set up to perform the procedure. We designed a method. We designed a method to, to measure duration of obstruction and also to measure the course of obstruction. The, the presence of persistent severe epigastric pain, the absence of bile in the gastric aspirate, and the admission bilirubin elevated uh, means obstruction. And the reverse, sudden relief of pain, appearance of pile in the gastric aspirate, and uh, the, and, and, the, and the, the, the fall of serum bilirubin level means decompression. 
this this uh, method was was uh, the ac accuracy of this method was sensibility was 100 percent specificity 96 percent positive predicted value uh, 88 percent and negative predicted value 100 percent so it's a very exact method who uh, uh, offered to to the to the to the the one who is treating the patient uh, many many security that the patient has obstructed or not ca or, or has this obstructed this is very important because if the if that decompression has any any benefit for the patient with acute pancreatitis the patient should be obstructed if the patient is this obstructed you cannot evaluate what is the value of uh, doing this or not so the patient not only should have acute biliary pancreatitis the patient has to be obstructed so these are the two things that is necessary to to detect when you are going to use uh, this this procedure in our study what what happened is that most of the study did not pay too much attention to the problem of ampullary obstruction uh, at the best uh, they put some modest they offer some modest attention to that but as you may see, there is 61 patients divided into two groups. The, the diamond figures means patients who were disobstructed, either spontaneously or by ERCP, but after 48 hours. You see there that at 48 hours, 71% of the patient, we are talking about the control group because the patients in the study group that were the patients uh, randomized to receive early ERCP, uh, all of them are either disobstructed spontaneously or disobstructed by uh, ERCP and endoscopic sphincterotomy. But in the control group, where if the patient needed sphincterotomy, that was done electively after 48 hours, you can see on the, the empty figures are patients without complications. And the filled figures are the patient with complications. As you may see, the percentage of patients with complications after 48 hours is significantly higher than the percentage of patients that were two, only two in 52 patients disobstructed either spontaneously or by, by ERCP with endoscopic sphincterotomy within 48 hours from the onset of symptoms. So that's got, I think, as a, a clear idea of the importance of the duration of obstruction in the indication of the procedure. You may see in, in the ampullary You see ampullary obstruction, you see mean, 95% confidence interval, and range. And there is no report, no report, no report, no report. The only ones that measure with the method that I showed you before, uh, these this, uh, figures. As you, as you may see, the, 
in the ERCP group, the duration of obstruction, the mean was 30 against 39, which is a statistical significant. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, in this, you may see here the difference in the rate of complication. In the ERC group was 3%, and the, in the conservative group, 26%. And that's difference is, but if you compare this, uh, the patients, not the patient by his treatment group, but making two subgroup of the patient that has less than 48 hours of obstruction, uh, regardless the group, the treatment group assigned by randomization, you will see that the patient with more than 48 hours, the percent of obstruction is 78%, and the less than 48 hours, 4%. That things that are very important, so these figures. So, on that basis, we, we, we pull the following, uh, they say, findings. In etiopathogenic, etiopathogenesis, the acute biliary pancreatitis is due to a sudden and complete obstruction uh, by a migrating gallstone, ephemeral in most of the patients. The diagnosis, all patients assume to have obstruction uh, by I can read from here. The diagnosis of all patients assumed to have obstructing acute gallstone pancreatitis, cholelithiasis and ampullary obstruction must be both rapidly and objectively detected by right upper quadrant ultrasound and serum bilirubin determination, respectively. Monitoring the course of obstruction is mandatory because the patient might be obstructed in a one hour today and four or five hours later could be disobstructed. Sever the severity criteria, acute gallstone pancreatitis with less of 48 hours of evolution is mild or moderate in 95, 90% of the patient. In 85, 90% of the patient. Therefore, it is advisable to use at admission a simple, not sophisticated criteria such as mild, moderate, and severe, like uh, any other disease, or the ransom criteria specific for acute gallstone pancreatitis, which was published in 1982. Most of the author uh, used the other criteria of ransom that was done for many other, for, for pancreatitis of any origin. Uh, next, please. And the recommendation that we can do in, bad, in that basis is early ERCP should be indicated in acute biliary pancreatitis patients with obstruction lasting from 24 to 48 hours. For what? Because if the patient has less than 48 hours, probably the patient is obstructed by itself. And also, after that, if the patient is obstruct, you don't have to perform any way just for the reason that the patient was randomized to that arm, endoscopic sphincterotomy. No? So, uh, you know, always is, 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 is better, do not, the, the first thing is not harm the patient. So that is, is more important that 
so that being strict in the in the randomization. Early endoscopic sphincterotomy within 48 hours to restore ampullary patency decrease the severity of pancreatitis, particularly if it is mild or moderate. Hemorrhagic necrotizing pancreatitis, acute biliary pancreatitis reach such a stage after 48 hours of obstruction. At that time, it's very likely that the stone is not longer impacted. And if it is, its removal will not reverse the installed necrosis. Nothing else. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Sages and Alex.